today we'll be talking about a very very important chapter uh, bab tuju penyata kewangan milikan tunggal alright why they say penyata kewangan milikan tunggal tanpa pelarasan why is the topic so long okay why they don't stop here okay because we know uh, penyata kewangan right so there is a milikan tunggal here then you can break down actually the two part uh, three parts by the way can you see the screen if yes you give me a yes in the chat box all right make sure everyone is seeing it on the same page so by the way this is the nota that i just sent into the group okay all right so penyata kewangan this is what we are going to learn today and then why is there dua perkataan kat sini milikan tunggal so if you come back to chapter one almost the last page of your buku text you you will see empat entity perniagaan all right so the first one is milikan tunggal you still remember milikan tunggal number two will be perkongsian so for those that are form five this year uh, this is the stuff that you have already learned okay number three is the uh, syarikat and then number four is club tan persatuan oh you call it club same right so this penyata kewangan is for milikan tunggal all right so for milikan tunggal punya milikan tunggal uh, for milikan tunggal punya penyata kewangan ada format sendiri okay then when you come to perkongsian then they have a little bit different for their milikan tunggal so ada perbezaan punya and then for syarikat ada perbezaan and then go to club dan persatuan ada perbezaan juga but then the basic is the same Acara, uh, merekod, aset, liability, equity pemilih, you know, the, the basic is there, right? The only difference is sometimes maybe the perkataan tukar. For example, in formilikan tunggal, we call modal. Tapi, when you come to club dan persatuan, we don't call modal. Kita panggil uh dia dana terkumpul you see benda yang sama tapi perkataan yang berbeza that's why here in the chapter the topic kat sini dia cakap penyata kewangan for milikan tunggal so this is what we are learning today all right so for perkongsian syarikat kelas dan persatuan that will be in uh tingkatan 5 all right so now is in tingkatan 4 okay then tanpa pelarasan so now we are doing the easy version of penyata kewangan because it's tanpa tanpa means in english what without right without pelarasan and this pelarasan we are going to learn in bab 8 later so this is a very big chapter okay where i will break down into four to five parts all right, so first one will be the uh, account semasa. You either belum terima, belum bayar. And then the second one, you go into the hutang lapo, hutang lapo terpulih, peruntukan hutang ragu. And then you go into what else? Like susut nilai. All right, and then you got uh, a jualan asset bukan semasa. How you record for the untung atas pelupusan uh, asset atau you record for the rugi atas pelupusan so these are the things that uh, we will be learning in bab 5 all right so after all this bab 5 comes in then it will make penyata kewangan more complicated and a bit difficult to answer 
All right. But now the last tempo without. So it's very, very straightforward. Okay. Straightforward question. Are you guys following? If yes, you give me an F in the chat box. Buggy F if you're following. Okay. Nice. So now, in penyata kewangan, we have to learn this penyata kewangan because it's very, very common. So now we are in the context of Milikan Tunggal, yeah? Okay. So, penyata kewangan, kita boleh terbahagi kepada tiga. There are three main account atau penyata in this chapter that we have to learn, including the format. Okay, kita mesti tahu format ni. Okay, so the first one is called account perdagangan. Okay, the second one is account untung rugi. And then the third one is called a penyata kedudukan kewangan. Right, it's, it's different thing ah when you nampak oi penyata kewangan. Okay, penyata kewangan maksud these three things. All right, but then when we say penyata kedudukan kewangan, then maksudnya penyata is a different thing. Two different thing ah. Please take note. All right, so these are the three account dan penyata that uh, we have to learn in this chapter. Make sure you remember. The format. The format is super, super, super penting. Okay? Because once you understand and remember the format bagi penyata perdagangan, this thing later, you go to form 5, you can bring into your bab 2, bab 4, bab 6, Oops, bab 6, and then bab 7. All right, so make sure, make sure you remember it. All right, so not only for this perdagangan, same goes to your untung, rugi, and also your penyata kedutukan kewangan. All right, so please remember please take this chapter uh seriously okay so now let's go to let's go back there all right so now let's look at account berdagangan dulu so what is this account berdagangan why do we need it so you can see the explanation over there i say what here Mengetahui sama ada sesebuah peniagaan mendapat untung atau rugi kasa. So this is a keyword for you to highlight it. Okay, so in for us to do the account perdagangan, kita nak tahu what is the untung kasa and what is the rugi kasa. Kasa. And then if we want to do account untung rugi, kita nak tahu untung atau rugi besi. Yeah, rugi and I'm sorry, kasa dan besi adalah benda yang berbeza. Alright, so for kasa in account berdagangan in for verse A will be untung rugi. So now let's look at this format. So how do we do this account perdagangan? Okay. So you see, first thing first. So typically when we are doing anything 
about this uh, penyata macam uh, imbangan duga. You know, we have to write the nama perniagaan dulu. Okay, on top here, nama perniagaan. Let's say perniagaan, no nonsense. Alright, and then after that will be the tajuk. What is the title for this uh, penyata? Alright, so here you call it account perdagangan. So this is like fixed. And then bagi tahun berakhir, the, the format is already fixed. So whenever you're writing for account perdagangan, memang you have to write the whole thing. Account perdagangan bagi tahun berakhir. And then the date. Ini tahun, uh, ini tarikh akan diberikan dalam soalan itu. Then you just put into this thing. Okay, and then now we are doing for format bentuk T. Ada dua format bentuk T dan format bentuk penyata. Okay, same. Account berdengan. But T dan penyata, because why is it a format T? Because you nampak T. Is it not? That's why this is called a uh, account berdengan format bentuk T. Alright, so when we talk about format penyata, it looks like that. Okay. But for now, just be patient. Let's look at ini. Bentuk T dulu. Alright. Okay. So, first thing, you must have the unit when you Malaysia. Alright. Okay. Then, you see here, Jualan is on the credit side. So now let's say here the right side. The left side will be the debit. And then the right side, we call the credit side. Lah, right? Okay. So on the credit side, you have jualan. All right. So whenever you sell your income, you draw barang, then you dapat duit the jualan. You, you record kat sini, jualan. Lepas tu, you ada pulangan jualan. Maksudnya, selepas you jual, ada orang yang tak suka atau barang sudah rosak, uh, size tak sama, size uh, size yang salah, warna yang salah, then mereka nak pulangkan uh, barang itu kepada kita. So that would be a pulangan jualan. So I have to minus it out. Alright? And then, selepas I tolakkan pulangan jualan, can you see? When I minus, I have to write the minus atau tolak. Okay? Can also. Up to you. So in the textbook, they put tola, okay? So it's either tola or you put a bracket minus like that. Uh, it depends on your teacher also, right? Sometimes your cikgu tak suka guna macam ni. So you you follow your cikgu punya format because it's your cikgu yang mark your exam paper. So make sure when you're doing, when you're doing the exam, you do according to your teacher's way. All right, what I'm, I'm, what I'm teaching here is I teach you how to understand. All right, I let you, I give you the understand for the accounting, the principal accountant, and then um, teach you how to score. Okay, but then one of the way to score good mark for your exam is to follow your teacher's way. So sometimes your chiku will be like, okay, uh, mulai, mulai, belajar, belajar. So you tak suka. Uh, apabila you buat macam ni, macam ni. Okay, so when your teacher says something like that, then you listen and then you don't make the same mistake that your teacher don't like. Alright, maybe your teacher say, uh, I suka sini ada satu uh, underline binya. Uh, then you just follow, okay, according to your teacher. Alright, of course, it must be makes sense. Alright. Okay, so now you can either put this one or this one. I think this is not a big issue here. So you can either put a, just a minus or you write a tola. Okay, so when you tola in accounting, make sure it's bracket. Okay, then you minus and you get a figure. And then the figure will be called a jualan basit. All right, and then here will be all the, uh, here is actually called a cost jualan, this part. Alright, so how do you get a cost jalan? First, you have inventory awal. Put it here. And then you got belian. You beli barang lah. Okay, so you put it here. Okay, lepas tu you minus pulangan belian. Minus you tolak. Then you get your 
Berlian Bersik. Lepas tu, you have to add Audi. Can you see or not? A, U, D, I, Audi. Right? So, A for anggota maksud U for upah atas Berlian. D for duty import. I for insurance atas Berlian. So, when you see something like this in your question, then you have to put it here. Alright, so you, after you get your Boolean Bersih, then you add all this RD and then you put it here. After you tambah, 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 then you get put it here and then you use this figure, your inventory awal, plus this figure, you get this cost barang untuk dijual. And then from this, your cost barang untuk dijual, you minus your inventory RQ, you get cost jualan. Lepas tu, you see, you compare this one dengan ini to see mana satu lebih besar and lebih besar punya masuk the jumlah all right after you get the jumlah then you you put it here and then you tolak and then you get this figure or get this figure later i will do one example for you okay are you guys clear if yes you give me a c in the chat box Okay, clear. Yeah. All right. So, you're wondering like, um, why macam ni when you are, like, why do we need to do this account perdagangan? All right. So, for your information, account perdagangan, uh, in English, we call it something like a, a trading account. All right. Perdagangan, all right. So, if you translate perdagangan, into BM, Bahasa Melayu, then it is called, what? I mean like BM, Bahasa Melayu, translate into English, okay? Then it will be called trading. Okay? This is called a trading account. Okay? So, why is it like that, why do we need to do this thing? Okay, very simple. Okay, because accounting, all we care about is logic. It has to be very logic because when we talk about account, accounting, English is called accounting, right? Okay. Okay, you see now, the accounting come from the word what? Counter, right? Right, so meaning you have to cure. So cure what? What are the things that you can cure? There are a lot of things you can cure. You very cure barang, no? You can cure uh what the stars you can count stars oh, it's not star it's stars okay then you can count what you can count money you see so accounting plays a very important role in our life whenever there is money so when there is money kita mesti ada accounting because someone has to count the money. And after counting the money and do all the recording, then we need to what? We need to report. Wait, um, report, reporting. Okay, we need to report to a lot of people. Report to the boss, report to the government, okay, kerajaan, why government? Because of cukai, tax. Okay, then we can, we need to report to the public, you know, siapa yang nak beli share, you, you, you buy, report to the bank, because kita nak pinjam wang, and so on. A lot, a lot, a lot of different people. Alright, that's why 
accounting is very important and that's why if you go in accounting it is very hard to go jobless it's very hard to get unemployed all right so and if you read some statistic and report uh, that's published by the news or government they say they're actually lacking uh, accountants in malaysia right think about uh 30 or forty thousand of accountants so they need 30 to 40 thousands of uh accountant is not like a normal accountant huh? when they say accountant maksud near the chartered accountant which is someone that is qualified to uh to account because when you say so siapa yang kira kira sahaja do those easy job and then they call themselves an accountant uh, that is not the accountant that we are referring to we when i say accountant maksudnya those that have like gone through the study period you know they have uh sit for exam you know acca ke icw ke cpa ke you know all these professional papers okay the plus two you got working experience you know in the work for minimum three years and then only you can be uh qualified as a chartered accountant registered under malaysia they uh, under the 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 thing under the malaysia is called mia okay malaysian institute of chartered accountant okay that is like if you, are, you want to be a chartered accountant in malaysia then you need to register under mia Okay, so when the news say, oh, MIA, like Malaysia, is lacking this 40,000 accountants. So meaning like our demand is quite high. Okay, a lot of people need us to go and do you know, the, this kind of accounting. All right, so uh, come back to this account perdagangan. Okay, why do we need to do this, do this account perdagangan? All right, so if you look at the account perdagangan, there are three main components, all right? Uh, account perdagangan. Perdagangan. So there are three main components. Number satu, ialah jualan. Padahal. Okay? So we want to know berapa yang kita jual. Okay, what is our hasil? Okay? Then the second component ialah the cost jalan. And when we sell barang, memang kita know, must know berapa cost itu. Okay, later I'll give you an example. Alright, but just know this one. Jalan, then the cost jalan. I have to minus my cost jalan. Alright, this bracket means minus. So after that, I will get what? The untung. Which is called the untung kasar here. Untung kasar. Okay, for example, let's say iPhone. Okay, so here, I don't know how many cameras iPhone 14 got. I think about three, lah, right, for the iPhone 14. Okay, so the Apple, okay. you know. Okay, so you see, this is an iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, selling for how much? Um, I didn't see the price though. Around, I think 5K, right? Or maybe more than that, around 6K. Okay, let's say 5,000 ringgit. Okay, so let's say I am a shop. My, my company is Apple. All right, so kita jual uh, uh, iPhone. Okay, so now we don't talk about 10,000 or 100,000 of iPhone being sold. Okay, let's focus with just one unit. Let's say today I can sell one iPhone and then the one, one iPhone, the, the selling price is 5,000 ringgit. Are you guys following? If yes, give me a, a one in the chat box if you're following. Okay, so. 5,000 ringgit for this iPhone. So when I sell it, suppose I draw, then my drawing, yola, 5,000 ringgit. Betul tak? 
This is what I sell. But is it really apa yang saya untung? No. Apa yang kamu jual tak semestinya apa yang kamu untung. Alright? How you did be considered as untung? It will be considered as untung after you minus the cost. Because when I do an iPhone, a phone, I need to have what? I need to have cost. You think this lens free punya? Jatuh daripada the sky lah, langit lah. Bukan lah, right? So I need to actually go and buy all these materials, the the chermin, you know, all the microchips, all the technology dalam iPhone ini. So, after you beli, you know, I have to buy chips from Intel ke, daripada uh, apa, uh, whatever lah, you know. I need to buy all those things. So, it will be in the billion lah, right? So, I buy, 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 dollar minus, you know. Then, let's say the cost bagi iPhone ini is about 500 ringgit. That is the cost, the total cost for this iPhone. Okay? So, after using 5,000 minus 500, then it goes to how much? 4,500. So, this 4,500 will be your untung kasa. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a UK for untung kasa. UK for untung kasa. Okay. So, this is apa yang kita record dalam account perdagangan. Okay. Then, later you'll be wondering, then kenapa selepas kita tahu kita punya untung, which is 4,500, kenapa ada lagi satu benda panggil untung bersih? I don't understand why. Okay. So, the untung bersih will be nanti in the... Uh, Account untung rugi lah, right? Account untung rugi. So, in if you look at the format for your account untung rugi, it will be your untung kasa. So, lepas your untung kasa, how do you get your untung kasa? Daripada your account berdagangan. Alright, so, lepas your, so how much is the untung kasa yang kita dapat tadi? 4,500. Okay, that is the cost to make the phone. That is the cost untuk membuat, untuk memproseskan uh, barang niaga. Okay? Then, in this format for your account untung rugi, if you look at the format, you have to actually tambah hasil tolak belanja. And then, you will get untung bersih. Okay, so now let's say come back to the example 4,500. So the pastor can the cost your land. So I got 4,500. Now this 4,500, I still have to pay at a thing. But that, you think my Apple store so big? I just sell the phone, then 4,500 straight away is the untung. Lah. Not possible. Your Apple store, Apple store. You have to pay what? Renter. In VM, kita panggil sewa. You need to sewa kedai. Sewa kan uh, factory. You know? To sewa kilang untuk memproseskan iPhone ini. So, all this je lah belanja. So, lepas sewa, am I the one to make the iPhone? Bukan. Ada siapa? Ada bekerja. You know, you got workers come in at 6 o'clock, work, work until 10 p.m. at night after work. Or do we have to pay them? Gaji, salary. Look that. You are running your factory. You are running. You open your store. You are opening it from morning 10 a.m. sampai 10 p.m. malam. The light, electricity, bill electricity, bill IA. All these things not money ah, tak perlu bayar, perlu. So all we all these ah, kada bayaran. You see, so these are a few examples dalam 
belanja ini and we have to include in the untung account untung rugi so after we earn this thing maybe sewa 1000 ringgit no gaji 1000 ringgit kada bayaran 500 ringgit maksudnya your jumlah belanja you add up everything it goes to 2500 this is 2500 Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box. Ah. So, you know, but then in Apple, you know, sometimes maybe we kita boleh ada hasil. Contoh, hasil. Let's say my, my, my Apple store is too big. You know, then I sewakan satu tempat okay, kepada Samsung. Untuk jual Samsung. So when I sewa kan my place to sell uh to Samsung, Samsung will have to pay me sewa. That is called a sewa diterima, isn't it? So this sewa diterima is actually a hasil. So maybe they pay me eight hundred ringgit. So that that will be considered my hasil lah. All right. So after everything, after I get from my untung kasa, I add my hasil eight hundred. I tolak my belanja. Then I get my untung bersih, which is 2,800. Ah, then this 2,800 ringgit adalah untung. Memang, memang untung. So, pas you pay all the thing, then this is my profit, my untung bersih. Ah, then this is my untung betul. Betul-betul punya untung. Excuse me. Are you guys faham? If faham, you give me an F in the chat box. So, now you know the difference between Untung kasar dan untung bersih. Account berdagangan dan account untung rugi. Alright, but let's not go so far to untung rugi dulu. Let's come back to untung perdagangan. Let's start with the question first. Okay, ini. Alright. Okay, where's my question? Okay. Okay, no. Not this one. Here. Okay, so Question number one. Berikut ialah baki yang diambil daripada buku-buku perincit Vincent pada 30 September 2020. So, these are all the maklumat. So, if you look at this thing, this is something like your imbangan duga. You still remember imbangan duga? Just that imbangan duga ada debit and credit. Ini tak ada. Dia terus uh, letak dalam satu uh, one straight line. Alright? Okay, then dia beritahu you ada inventory pada 30 September 2020 penilai 9,560 pada harga cost and 8,940 pada harga pasaran. Okay, so anda dikenal lagi menyediakan account perdagangan bagi tahun berakhir 31st, uh, sorry, 30 September, account untung rugi dan penyata kedudukan kewangan. So now, take out your buku nota and let's do this question together. And you see, ah, we have to do bentuk T. So let's do bentuk T. So here, the first thing, nama, what is the name of this penegan? Vincent, right? So you just put Perunjit Vincent. Plus two, what is the tajuk for this one A? Account berdagangan bagi tahun berakhir. You just copy only. All right, very straightforward. Account berdagangan bagi 
tahun berakhir 30 September 2020. And here you can put the Ringgit Malaysia, Ringgit Malaysia. Okay, are you guys ready? If yes, give me an R in the chat box. Ready. Okay, let's go. So, these are all the information, but not all the information here will be masuk into the account berdagangan. All right, this information is for all this ABC. So we have to pandai bandai no mana satu dalam account perdagangan mana satu dalam account untung rugi mana satu into the penyata kedudukan kewangan. Okay, but there are few common things that will be account perdagangan. The first thing is jualan. The second thing is belian. The third thing is inventory. Okay, then. Only number four will be the Audi. Okay, these are the common things in the account for the government. Uh, you can write it down and you write it down. Okay, let me repeat again. Jualan. So when I say jualan, I mean jualan and pulangan jualan. So when you see jualan, then you put it inside the government. And when you see the word belian, then you put it inside the account for the government. Account, uh, sorry, belian, pulangan belian, masuk dalam account perdagangan. Okay, when you see inventory, inventory awal, inventory akhir dalam account uh, perdagangan. When you see Audi, what is the Audi again? Angkutan masuk, upah atas belian, duty import, insurance atas belian. These four things, if you see them, inside account perdagangan. Alright, so let's start. So you see modal, this one is in PKK. Okay, lengkapan no, kenderaan no, overdraft bank no, tunai no, ambilan no. You see, inventory by the 1st October 2019. So when you see a 1st October 2019, and this one is by the 30th September, meaning this is the RQ, and this will be the awal lah. Fair enough. This is the awal tempo awal. This is the tempo akhir. Alright. Therefore, this is actually an inventory awal. Clear. So, I have to record this one. Later. Berlian. Yes, I have to record. You see, I told you berlian mesti ada. Jualan mesti ada. Okay, you see pulangan mesti ada. But what is pulangan keluar? Pulangan keluar means pulangan Oh, pulangan keluar is already uh, so forgotten. I think pulangan keluar means uh, should be a pulangan berlian. Yeah. Write down pulangan berlian. Okay. Pulangan keluar. This keluar means berlian. Okay. Then discount titerima no lah. Okay. You see, angkutan masuk. You remember the Audi? Yes. So, I'm going to mark. So, it will be here. You look back at your format. Account berdagangan. Berdagangan, berdagangan. You see? So, you see all the jualan will be here. Inventory. When you see inventory, mesti masuk. Belian masuk. Pulangan belian masuk. All this Audi. This Audi. Angkutan masuk. Upa ada sebelian. Duty import. Insurance ada sebelian. Tetap sini. Okay. So, come back to this question. Angkutan masuk mah. Betul tak? Audi. So, tetap. Sewa kedai, no. Alat tulis, no. Kedai bayaran, no. Insurance. Insurance sahaja. Full stop. Meaning, no. Unless dia soalan ini adalah insurance atas belian. And then, we record here. If it is just insurance sahaja, dalam akaun untung rugi nanti. Okay, we don't record here. Belanja runcit, no. Iklan, no. ABB, no. ABT, no. Okay, then here. You see, inventory by the 30th September 2020. I told you just now, September 2020, 30th, ialah RQ. Maksudnya, this is actually inventory RQ. And I told you, inventory, 
masuk dalam akaun perdagangan betul tak so now which amount yang kita ambil is it 9560 atau 8940 9560 pada harga cost so we should use this one or this one pada harga pasar so very simple we don't care about the harga cost atau harga pasaran take note ah this one they always ask one okay so you just take the amount yang terendah let me repeat it again you ambil amount yang terendah atau lebih rendah so mana satu amount lebih rendah inilah 59 sorry 8940 lah maksudnya 8940 will be your inventory RQ. Are you clear or no? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box for clear. So you don't care anything. You nampak the figure yang lebih kecil, lebih rendah, you ambil je yang figure itu. Okay? I tak kisah dia uh, harga kos ke atau harga pasaran. I don't care. Okay? I only take the figure that is lower, which is 8940 in this case. Alright, so after you know, you really take all these things. So how do we do it? So you equal the format on the credit side will be the jalan. So kita ada jalan. Okay, ada pulangan jalan tak? Okay, tadi kita nampak it's only this few thing and there is no pulangan jalan, isn't it? So kita boleh skip lah. So jalan is how much? So you just letak jalan is 48,000. 760. So, this is a jalan. So, tak ada pulangan jalan, maksudnya kita tak ada jalan bersih. Alright? Why do we have jalan bersih? Kita ada jalan bersih apabila ada pulangan jalan. Ini saya nak. But then, soalan ini tak ada pulangan jalan, therefore, kita tak ada jalan bersih. Right? So, next. After jalan will be what? Okay, come back to this format dulu. So, bus jalan here on the left side, will be the inventory awal. Can you see? Inventory awal. After inventory awal, you letak belian. Okay. Ada pulangan belian dah tadi nampak? Ada. So, tolak pulangan. Tapi dalam soalan ini, bukan panggil pulangan, pulangan belian. Dia panggil pulangan keluar. So, you just follow what the question give. So, you just put pulangan keluar. So, how much is the inventory? So, ini kita perlu dua... Uh, column. So, inventory awal we letak ke sini. So, inventory awal is this one. So, inventory pada 1st October 2019, 12,000. 360. Jangan ambil inventory ke sini. ya, Because inventory kat bawah sini adalah inventory RQ. Okay. Ini for tempat lain nanti. So, awal punya yang ambil daripada sini. RQ punya yang ambil daripada bawah. Same for other question. You see, inventory RQ kat bawah punya. Inventory awal dalam sini punya. So, where is the inventory awal? Mm, inventory, inventory, inventory. Yeah, this one. This is the inventory awal. Look at question 3. Inventory RQ, sini. Inventory awal, dalam sini. Where, where is it? When you see the word inventory, yes, this is the inventory awal. So, conclusion, yelah, when you see inventory dalam sini, then it's always the inventory awal. And when you see the inventory kat luar sini, then this is the inventory RQ. And which one do we take? You take yang lower menu. Are you clear or not? If yes, you give me an F for faham. So that is a very, very easy way to know inventory awal atau inventory RQ. All right. So next, after the inventory awal you letak, then the next thing will be the boolean. So boolean ke sini. So why do we put here? Because if you look at the format, Alright, the inventory boolean have to do all this plus and minus dulu. Okay, kita tak boleh terlus plus dengan inventory awal. I have to tolak up my boolean plus my Audi, then only I put it here. Can you see the logic? Therefore, if I straight away put it here, and then I put here, you see, everything together in macam tak cantik. Okay, so in accounting, kita mesti ada Susunan. There is a, a system, systematic, right? That's what we need in accounting. Or else, you add a banyak nombo. Okay, if you don't manage your nombo uh, neatly, arrange it neatly, 
then you tak akan faham what you're writing. You don't faham, you won't faham your own penyata kewangan. Right, that's why we have to arrange the number accordingly and nicely and neatly. All right, so we put it here first. So bullion. So how much is the bullion here in the question? So the bullion is 33,980. So you just put here 33980. Okay. Because kita ada pulangan keluar. So very simple. Huh? When you say pulangan keluar is another term for your pulangan bullion. If you see pulangan masuk, then that is your pulangan jualan. Okay, so you can write this down. Pulangan masuk equals to pulangan jualan. Pulangan keluar equals to pulangan belian. So how much is a pulangan keluar? Is 680. And can you see or not? We have to tolakkan your pulangan keluar. Therefore, in amount sini, I have to bracket. Alright, because in accounting, bracket maksud. Apa? Tolak. Alright? That's why we have to bracket it. Telling us we have to minus this figure. So here, I have to minus lah. So you use 33,980. Tolak 680. So this one minus this one, you get 33,300. Minus, yeah? Okay. So here, this one, we will call it a bullion bursi. This is a bullion bursi. And then after that, I have to plus my Audi. If we have Audi, do we have Audi? Tadi kita nampak satu Audi. One of the Audi here, the A. The angkutan masuk sini. 460, right? Yes, 460. So here, I need to plus angkutan masuk. Sahaja. Right? If you hanya ada angkutan masuk sahaja, you just put angkutan masuk je. Okay, you don't have to put other thing. Okay, you only put apa yang ada. If kosong, then you don't have to write the name. Okay, so angkutan masuk, 460 ringgit. Then you add, and then you put it here. So here it goes to 33,300, tambah 460, you get 33,700. And 60. And make sure selepas you tambah, you must have a line ke sini. Can you see the garisan ke sini? Yes. You selep, uh, every time, okay, setiap kali you tolak ke atau you tambah, mesti ada satu garisan ke bawah. Just like this one. Belian bersih. How do you get your belian bersih? You use 33,000 minus 680. So selepas you tolak, nampak tak garisan sini. Okay, you draw a line, then you get this figure. You plus this, and draw a line, and then you get this figure. Okay, so this one we can call it. If you want to call it, you can call it a cost bullion. We call it a cost bullion here. Okay, so suppose so this figure, I have to use this figure cost bullion plus inventory hour twelve thousand three hundred and sixty. So let's plus it. Tambahkan three thousand seven hundred sixty. You akan dapat. 46120. And because saya tambah, that's why I put a line here. And you see or not? So this, this is a normal match. When you add, you minus, make sure you have a line there. Okay? So you get this figure. This one, we call it as a cost barang untuk dijual. Okay, very important term. You must take note. Mm. Okay, cost barang untuk dijual. You must have. All right, then you get 46,120 for this cost barang untuk dijual. The past two, last step, you minus your inventory RQ. Can you see or not? So, tadi inventory awal you tambah dengan cost berlian. 
Selepas tu, you have to minus your inventory RQ. What? How much is your inventory RQ? Ini, kat bawah sini. So, your inventory RQ, you take the number yang rendah punya, 8940, you put it here. And because this is minus, therefore the amount must be in, what? Bracket, 8940. And then, how much you get? Minus eight nine four zero, you get thirty seven thousand one hundred and eighty. This one we call it a cost jalan. Then I will normally skip a line, okay, and then you skip a line, and then here you put one line double line. Make sure mereka adalah dalam barisan yang sama. Okay, so far you guys following. If yes, you give me a one in the chat box. Satu. Okay. All right. Make sure you are following because as I said, bab ini sangat sangat penting. Okay. So after you get this cost journal, how do you get this cost journal again? You use this cost barang ulu dija. Tolak your inventory RQ, you akan dapat ini, 37180, which is your cost drawn. So now we have to finish this. How do we finish this? So very simple, just like when you're doing your ledger. All right, you remember you do your ledger, your, your, uh, all your account T. How do you close it? You close it by comparing the debit and credit side to see which side has a bigger figure betul tak so here you compare so you take this the lower one 37,180 compared to the credit side 48,000 definitely 48,760 adalah lebih besar therefore here the jumlah we take the big figure and then the debit side we take the same figure as your credit side the jumlah and then this is like doing your baki HB and BB alright so here you will use this 48,000 the jumlah, tolak your 37,180. So it's something like your total minus your cost insurance. And then you get 11,580. This one, we call it a untung kasa. 11580. And if the figure is here, then this one we will call it a rugi kasa. Rugi means loss. Okay, untung means profit. Rugi means loss. So if you lost on the credit side here, then you put here you put as rugi, and if it's on the debit side here, you put it as a untung. All right. So look to the format. You compare it to the format, the example that I gave to you. So you can see it's the same thing. So, inventory awal, belian, pulangan, uh, belian le pulangan keluar, then you get the belian bersih, then you plus. You see the Audi here, we only take what uh, the question give. Alright, so the question only give for angkutan um, masuk, yeah? so you just put this one only, and then you get the figure, you put it here. So, here is actually your cost belian, then you plus with your inventory awal, you get your cost barang untuk dijual, lepas tu, you minus your inventory RQ. Can you see or not? And then you get your cost jalan. So the undung kasa will be here. The rugi kasa will be here. Are you clear or not? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box. All right. So this is the way. Okay. So come back to the example that I gave to you tadi regarding to the iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, so the iPhone 14 Pro, you remember, first thing when I draw the iPhone, ialah 5,000. But I tak untung semua daripada 5,000 ini because iPhone ini, I mesti ada beli barang, beli material, beli uh, aluminium, silicon, microchip, screen, you know, all these things, camera, lens, you know. So, I buy all these things 
and then that is the boolean can you see now okay and then maybe there is some inventory our inventory our meaning takkan like every time i need to buy there's some leftover uh, inventory barang that i can use from last year so i use that one that's why i add it add it in okay and then angkutan masuk is like a de delivery fee all right so when they deliver all the material all the barang to me okay all the lands to me i need to pay for the delivery fee that's called angkutan masuk so is a belanja is a cost right so the pasu tambah you get the cost barang tu dijual and then i have to minus the inventory aki inventory aki means after i buy everything tak semestinya saya akan gunakan all the thing that i buy betul tak so memang ada a few more extra so the few more extra i can keep it for next year to make more iphone betul tak so that extra that i keep is called inventory aq and because i didn't use it saya tak gunakan barang yang ini untuk buat iphone therefore i have to minus it out because this is not my cost even though i beli a lot but i only record down apa yang digunakan that's why it is called a cost barang untuk dijual sebab so, you minus this cost jual can be called cost jual atau is something like a cost barang yang digunakan you see so i only record what that i use for the iphone to sell the iphone all right then you get this untung kasar 11580 so continue so if i want to continue now yes i can that will be the b section which is the account untung rugi bagi tahun berakhir 30 september 2020 let's go okay so here that will be for b Okay, then I'll just like you know, copy and paste. So same thing for accounting really make sure you have the name, nama penegaan, lepas tu nama tajuk this account so this is called a account untung rugi so you put it here account untung rugi so normally you just straight away copy from the question bagi tahun ber q 30 september oops i'm going to Okay, so if you look at the format, number that for many uh, format T for account don't really. So you see that the hasil, these are the hasil, ah, the commission determiner, sale determiner, fire data simpanan, discount determiner is in the credit side, and then all the belanja, the gaji, semua adalah dalam debit side. So this thing is just like your what? Your habali, let's see. So if it is a belanja, that bit side. If it is a hasil, it will be on the credit side. So whenever you're doing your account, you will make sure your hasil is on here, your belanja is here. Are you clear? And then if you look at your account berdagangan, it explain also. You see, jualan dah hasil will be on the credit side. All this belian lah, angkutan masuk, Audi, all these are belanja. Therefore, it is in the debit side. Alright? Okay. So you can see, rugi kasa, untung kasa is here. So how do we do this uh, account untung rugi? So very simple. After you get your untung kasa, this is your untung kasa. This question yela continue bunya. 
All right. So selepas dia tapak your undung kasa, which is 11580, then you bring it down to your untung rugi. And when we bring it down, kita tak boleh straight away untung kasa bring to here. Masalah. Okay, you have to know that one thing about this prinsip perkara adalah they always cross like that. Just like your baki HB to BB. HB to BB. It must be cross. Tak boleh straight line punya. Alright, so same thing for your undung kasa. When you want to bawa, your undung kasa have to bring it down to here. Like that. Okay, that's why when you look at the format, the untung kasa is, must be here and the rugi kasa will be here because the rugi kasa will be here, the rugi kasa, then you bring down to the debit side. All right? And then because it's untung, all right, therefore it's something like a hasil. So it is in the credit side. Clear? All right? Okay, then let's continue to the question. So now, all this thing in record, you can Okay, so now let's focus on the untung kasa. So, uh, sorry, untung rugi. So for account untung rugi, kita record what you see here, the abad link. That I draw this now. Where is my abad link? Let me draw again. Okay. So today, you see a new level of understanding for this abalim. Okay, so what is A? A for asset, B for belanja, A for ambilan, L for liability, H for sale, and for model. So, okay, so when you see this asset liability belanja hasil, so let's focus on this first. So this belanja and hasil we record into account. And then for lying, asset, liability, ambilan, and modal, we record in penyata kedudukan. Is it not? So, whenever we see a belanja hasil, it is in account untung rugi. When you see asset, liability, ambilan, modal, it will be in the penyaga kedudukan kawan, or we call it the PKK. Then what about perdagangan? So, tadi I already give you the for example for the perdagangan, right? So the first one is the jualan. The second one is the belian. The third one is what? The inventory, our RQ. And then the last one is the Audi. So these are the four main items in the account berdagangan. When you come to account untung rugi, all the belanja hasil will be here. When you come to PAK, asset liability, ambilan, the modal here. Clear or not? If clear, you give me a one in the chat box. Satu. You see? That's why I say this abalim adalah sangat-sangat penting and useful if you can understand it. So, it, so from chapter 2, you'll be seeing this thing. Is it chapter 2 or chapter, chapter 4 or 5? Lah, right? So, chapter 5 when you do ledger and then when you come to imbangan duga, you're using this also. Alright? So, you come to here. Lebih. You need to use this more. All right. Okay. So, with that being said, now I need to do account. So, I need to focus on 
belanja dan hasil. Betul tak? Belanja dan hasil. So, now I need to identify mana satu adalah belanja dan hasil. Then only I record there. So, you see, modal. To show we know modal is not belanja hasil, then this is in the PKK lah, right? So, no, we don't record. Lengkapan, do we record? Lengkapan is an asset. So, no, I don't record. Kenderaan, asset juga. Overdraft bank, a liability. Tunai, asset. Ambilan, ambilan. So, you look at all this asset in the PKK. Ambilan, modal in the PKK. So, I don't take it, all right? Then, the inventory, burden, all that, all these things sudah record tadi in the account berdagangan. So, if sudah record dalam account berdagangan, we don't touch it anymore. We only record once. Alright? So, inventory sudah belian dan jualan dan pulangan keluar dan Okay, discount determiner. Now, this discount determiner is a hasil. So, I need to record. You see it? Alright? Discount determiner, determiner, discount. So, that is a hasil. If it is a hasil, you record dalam your account. Don't worry. Okay, then, angkutan masuk tadi sudah record dalam uh, account perdagangan sini. So, don't have to. Sewa kedai, you sewa. Alright, you buy a sewa. That is a belanja. Belanja, I have to record. I love to list. I love to list as a belanja also. Okay, you don't take it as a inventory ah, or uh, or asset. Ah. No, ah. I love to list normally because I love to list not something that you can keep. Let me repeat again. How do we differentiate asset? Asset, normally you see asset, it can hold for very long. Like your car, you can use it more than one year. Your, your house, all the lampu, kipas, sofa. You see a sofa, you can sit and you can use it for more than two, three, four, five years, six, seven, eight, nine years. Some, someone, somebody use it for 20 years or 15 years. All right, so these are all asset parable. But then when you say Allah to list, like what? Like this pen. You just use about, if you're in office, you use every day, then five or six days, dia sudah tak ada ink. You can bong it already. That's why all this stationary, Allah to list, kertas, all this are Allah to list, so you record it as a belanja. But then you, if you say computer, ah, these are asset because after you use it, you still can sell it. Have, have you seen someone you use this pen? You tell me, ah, after you go a pen ini, you beli dengan dua ringgit, you guna, lepas tu you tak nak, then you nak jual second hand. You think people will come and buy your second hand pencil? People will come and buy your second hand paper? No lah. Okay? Unless you say recycle, then there's a different thing, but then that is not an asset. That is a belanja. Do you faham? If you faham, you give me a B in the chat box for belanja. So whenever you say Allah to list, it is a belanja. Alright? So, belanja, kada bayaran, you see, nampak bayar lah, kan? Okay, so bayar, belanja lah. Okay, insurance, belanja lah. Belanja, runcit, belanja lah, is a belanja. Iklan, is like what? Advertisement. Okay, you advertise like Marvel, Cinema, GSC, Coca-Cola, McDonald. You, you pass by, you nampak satu billboard on the roadside. Okay, so all these are like an iklan, they advertise. Okay, so all these are belanja juga. It's a cost. And then, account belum bayar is a what? Is a liability. ABT, a, a asset. So, I don't record. So, you can see, once you know which one is hasil, which one is belanja, then you can do your account untung rugi. Very straightforward. Okay, so now these are the hasil. Right? Okay, so this account determine hasil. Hasil will be on the credit side. So you put here, discount determiner. So, uh, it the undung kasa is 11,580. Discount determiner is 350. Okay, then... Saver kedai, a belanja, belanja on the debit side. So, saver kedai. Hmm. 
Sewa kedai is 4,500. Then alat tulis. Alat tulis 185. Kada bayaran. 670 insurance 855 belanja runci 170 clan Two thousand three hundred. You can see this is format. Okay, then as usual, after that you skip satu barisan, and then you draw one line, double line for the jumla. Okay, one line, double line. Okay, so you see which one is bigger. You have to calculate them. Okay, so let me put this one equals to 8,000. So you see debit side is just 8,000, but credit side, satu item sudah ada 11,000. Maksudnya, of course, credit side is bigger lah, right? So then both sides, you put the same figure, 11,930. So this one here, you will have to use this jumla. Okay, 11,930. Tola everything here. Minus all the belanja. Okay, then you get 3,250. So this 3,250 will be called your untung. So as you can see, all the untung will be on the left side if here will be the rugi. So are you guys okay with this B? If yes, give me an okay in the chat box. Okay, yeah, so this is your account berdagangan. This is your account untung rugi, right? Okay, do you have time for penyata kedudukan kawangan? I think we do have time for it, okay? This PKK is super easy because this PKK, you dah belajar dalam your bab dua. Siapa masih ingat? You masih ingat you give me a two in the chat box. PKK, penyata kedudukan kewangan bentuk T. What is bab two in your form four? The bab two in form four is your persamaan per accountant. So how we did in the bab two persamaan perkenaan was you have to do the jadual persamaan perkenaan. Lepas your lepas your jadual persamaan perkenaan, you get the jumlah and then you put it into your penyata kedudukan kewangan dalam bentuk T. So today we do the same thing. Okay. So but now is you need to know the format. All right. You need to know the format. So the format is here. Penyata kedudukan kewangan. Sini. So, same thing, always nama, lepas tu tajuk, penyata kedudukan kewangan, and then you got asset. So, you ada asset bukan semasa and asset semasa. So, on the debit side. So, here is the asset. So, if you still remember the formula of how is the formula works, asset 
equals to liability plus equity per million. You see? So this is what we learned in BAP 2. All right? So here is all the asset. It goes to this side is the liability plus equity per million. So you see equity per million here and also the liability here. EP and L. Liability. So liability, same. You break down to two. Liability bukan semasa. Then liability semasa. All right. So then at the end, you, you plus everything. They must be the same. So if here is 500, then here will be 500 also. Okay, because this is the equation. And this format is the expression of this equation. A equals to L plus EV. So how do we do that? So come back to here. So apa yang sudah record, let me repeat again, is recorded. Then we can skip it. We just focus on those that haven't been recorded yet. So if you come here, look at, let's use another color, um, maybe this color, purple. Okay, so model. Okay, model is considered in the equity per million, EP. Lengkapan, asset. Asset apa? Asset bukan semasa. Kenderaan, asset bukan semasa. So, how do you differentiate between asset bukan semasa dan asset semasa? Asset bukan semasa adalah aset yang boleh digunakan lebih daripada satu tahun. Manakala aset semasa hanya boleh digunakan kurang daripada satu tahun. That is like a normal definition. Okay? So, aset bukan semasa lebih daripada satu tahun. Aset semasa kurang daripada satu tahun. Alright? So, lengkapan kenderaan all this car you can use more than one year that's why it is in the asset bukan semasa overdraft bank overdraft bank so this is a liability semasa so same thing ada liability semasa dan liability bukan semasa so for a liability semasa maksudnya it has to be lesser than a year manakala liability bukan semasa adalah lebih daripada satu tahun so overdraft bank you have to know that this overdraft bank tak boleh okay tak boleh hutang lebih daripada satu tahun. If you hutang, because you have to know how bank works. Okay, let me draw this out. Are you guys following so far? If yes, you give me an F in the chat box. I hope I'm not going too fast. If okay, you're following, you give me an F in the chat box. Okay, so you have to know this pinjaman thing. Okay, this is like a side extra uh, knowledge for you. Okay, so pinjaman, we normally we go into long and short term. Long term. Long term and short term. So you know what is the long term? Long term means panjang. Okay, tempo yang panjang. Short term means tempo yang uh, pendek. Alright? So, long term here, we will do it into like more than one year, lebih daripada satu tahun. And then, uh, short term will be lesser than one year. Okay. So, if a long term pinjaman, normally, the interest rate, the interest rate, Okay, or we call it a faida in BM. Adalah lebih rendah. Meaning, the longer you pinjam, the lesser the interest rate will be. Okay, so normally this pinjaman you can go 5 years, 10 years. That's why the pinjaman for a a house, okay, pinjaman loan uh, rumah, the interest rate is just about 3-4% setahun. Okay, in between 
this percentage now. If you ask your parents if they want to buy a house, yeah, this is the rate in between 3 to 4%. Okay, so the longer it is, the lower the interest rate. I'm not talking about interest. Uh. Interest and interest rate are two different things. Uh. Okay. Okay, I'm talking about interest rate. Interest rate means the percentage. So the longer it goes, the high, the lower the interest rate will be, the percentage will be. Okay, let's say opinion for 10 years. Okay, so I'm talking about house, right? So house 35 years. You boleh pinjam up to 35 tahun. So about 3 to 4%. Okay, but then if you are talking about personal financing, Let's say, jika you nak buka satu business, you bagi to the bank and you nak pinjam wang. So, normally, this pinjaman is short term, maybe five, uh, three to five years. Okay. Then you see, you go and check how much is the rate. The rate is about seven to eight percent. This is loan, business loan, let's say, business loan or personal financing. This. Business loan. You see, so this is about business loan three to five years. The rate you can see is higher. Now, let's talk about short term. Short term will be the overdraft bank, Chonto. Now, this overdraft bank when your interest rate because all these are liability. So when you talk about liability, normally they will have a file that the interest rate attached to it. So, if you overdraft longer, then you have to pay more interest. Now, this overdraft bank interest can amount to more than 10%. Satu tahun. Okay, like credit card. If you ask your parent, hey, apa? Jika credit card you dah bayar, you perlu bayar berapa percentage of interest is about 15, it can go up to 20%. Can you see? Because all this credit card, you need to book pinjaman long term. All this credit card, you have to settle now. So if you satu hari ta settle, 15 to 20%. Dua hari satu minggu. So you can see, if you hutang 100 ringgit sahaja, you tak bayar on your credit card, after one or two years, it can go on to 20,000. If you buy this 100 ringgit, uh, so after one or two years, this same 100 ringgit based on percentage interest in it, it can go up to very high because of short term. This is a short term uh, pinjaman, so the short term rate akan lebih tinggi bunyo. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box. So this is like a side information for you so you can see conclusion is the longer term punya pinjaman lower interest rate the shorter term punya pinjaman higher interest rate okay so come back to here eh? how come i come to this part yeah i was talking about yeah overdraft bank so overdraft bank that's why the interest rate is very high and the overdraft bank has to be cleared as soon as possible. That's why this overdraft bank is like a liability semester. And if you think, if it is a bank, then it is an asset semester. So if it is an overdraft bank, same semester, but it's a liability semester. Then the tuna is asset semester. Because this tuna you have to use every day. You see now, you cannot keep the tuna for more than one year. You, after you, the money comes in, then you need to pay the account balloon buyer, you need to pay your pumper cup, or you need to pay for your kada buyer. You see, so the money cannot be kept for more than one year or even three, three months in out, in out every day. So that's why your tuna is as a semester. You see, ambulance is in the equity pumpile. Inventory awal, no. Okay, then go, 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 go to your account balloon buyer. ABB is a liability semester. ABT is your asset semester. And then last thing is your inventory. Okay, now, the only thing that we repeat 
in your penyata kewangan is your inventory acum. Okay, you, first, you record your inventory acum in your account perdagangan. Then the second, your inventory acum have to be recorded in your PKK, penyata kedudungan kewangan. And this inventory acum is your asset semasa. So, quickly, after knowing this, So this is a penyata kedudukan kewangan pada kejus kopi pada tertiat September 2020. So this is a penyata. So on your left is your asset. Bukan semasa, always the bukan semasa come first. Right, because it's longer, so you underline it. Okay, set bukan semasa, you just put it on the ABS. So you add lengkapan penderaan. Uh, what else? Only these two, right? Okay, so the lengkapan is 5,002. The kenderaan is 18,690. Then you add them up first. So you get 23,890. Okay, after that will be your asset semasa. So what are your asset semasa? Your asset semasa, your 29. Right, so now I can put it here first because I nak tambahkan, then I put it here. So, 29 as as a muscle, 1, 2, 3, 0. 1, 2, 3, 0. So, all this settle when you, okay. And my account belum terima, right? Account belum terima. 3, 1730. Okay. And then my inventory appeal. SSMA also. Mm, inventory appeal is same. Use of same figure. Yang lower benya. 8940. Okay. Then draw line. Okay, then you can lock up. Thirteen thousand nine hundred. Okay, so you see this thirteen thousand nine hundred is a jumla of your assets semasa this tree. You get this figure. Okay, then after that, you don't do anything first. Actually, this box don't have to. I have to draw this box first. Okay, later. So you leave it like that first. Okay, then you come to here on the credit side, you start off with the equity per million. So in your equity per million, you got what? You add the modal awal, tambah uh, untung bersih. Ada boleh ambil anda? Ada. So then you tolak ambil anda. Okay, so modal awal is the modal ini. This is, you see, all this inventory, the modal yang kat sini is the awal. Alright, so modal awal, we just put here, 30,000. And then the undung bersih from where? From here. You see, you just got the undung bersih from your undung rugi, you put it there. 3,250 here. Okay, then you add them up. How much you get? 3,250, you get 33,250. And how much is the ambulance? You see here, we got ambulance, right? So 1,260. So 1,260. Then the minus, how much you get? 
So 33,250 minus 1,260, you get 31,990. So this one, we call it as a modal RQ. So these are the word, important words that you must the other, ah, perkenan all this modal awal. So equity per million is very like common, normal. Modal awal, dan bak undung bersih, tolak ambilan, you dapat modal RQ. Alright? Okay, then next thing. Do we have liability bukan semasa? So you come back here again, you check. Tak ada. Alright? Kita tak ada pinjaman. So pinjaman, normally pinjaman is a liability bukan semasa. So the other liability bukan semasa, you skip, you come to liability semasa. Alright? So what will be in your LS, liability semasa? Your overdraft bank. Okay, so this one, since uh, there's another one, so I open another column. So this column is kind of flexible, you can see it. So overdraft bank, I put it here, I add up first. So overdraft bank is uh, 3,650. Okay, so um, okay, lastly will be the account belum bayar, LSB semasa. Account belum bayar which is um, 2,150. So after that, you add up and put here. five thousand eight hundred. Okay, so this is the Joomla liability semasa. Then you can add this two up. Get 37,000. 790. So at the same place, same very sun after here. So on the same line here, you put one line double line. Then only you add these two up. The asset bukan semasa plus your asset semasa, you get 37,790. The reason I don't put one line double line first on your debit side is because I don't know how long this is going to be. And satu syarat dalam when you're doing this thing, you see, all this online double line, the jumlah must be on the same line. Therefore, I know here, I'm not sure here, here will be longer or lower. Therefore, I just leave it here first. And then I complete this part. And then you see, wait, oh, so this is longer actually. So after here, then you draw the one line double line here, then you add up. And at the end, these two must be in bang. Right, so this is your answer for your penyata kedudukan kewangan. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a one in the chat box. So it's very simple. All the asset you buang here, the equity formula, and all the liability you buang here. So at the end, you can see that this is like the abalim. So asset. You see here, liability here, modal sini. But you'll be thinking, eh, kenapa ambilan is here? Now, that's why when here ambilan is positive, you go to the other side, it becomes a minus. That's why ambilan here is on the minus sign. Can you see it? So it's just like your maths. Ah. So if you're on the left side, you go to the right side of the equation, it becomes uh, from positive to minus or from minus to positive. All right, so this is how it works. Is everyone done? If you are done, you give me a D-O-N-E done. At the same time, give you homework, then uh, I will let you go. All right. Okay. Wow, you guys so fast. Very good. Okay, so I give you homework. So you go to page. Um. Okay, go to page one six five. Do question six, question seven. Go to page one six six. Do question ten, question eleven. And go to page, hold on.
Ừ, ok về. Okay, go to page one seven zero and do question twenty two. That's it. All right, so total five question. So page one six five will be your account for Page one six six will be your account for Page one seven zero will be your PKK. So all these five questions, do it in Bento T. Okay, I guess noted. If you have noted down, you give me a T in the chat box. Bento T, Bento T. Okay, after that, you may leave. And I'll see you in next class. All right, goodbye everyone. And take care.